All right. Wow. Okay. Much better. <laughs> Welcome to V Me. Um, how many of you here? You're here at V Me for the first time. Right here. Welcome. Welcome. Um, glad to have you. Uh, this is this is already our fifth session. Uh, but thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed this session. Let me just uh, before I introduce our awesome uh, speaker. Let me just run you through some announcements for today. Um, so Vimi, so if you if you're new and you haven't registered, just so that we have your contact details and we can get in touch with you, sign up at tiny.cc uh, slash SIPKL Vimi. So Vimi's are run well, all over Malaysia and this particular one that you are sitting in right now is hosted by SIPKL. So uh, if you can sign in and, and if, you, if you have not already done so, tiny.cc slash SIPKL Vimi um, and you can ask either myself or uh, uh, there's a pastor who runs this, Pastor Fergus, uh, and for more info about this, right? And uh, we have a WhatsApp group that most of you are in. So if you're not in the WhatsApp group, uh, you can either come and meet me, Pastor Edmund, or uh, Deacon Stefan, uh, the one who led worship just now, uh, and you'll be added into that group. And of course, for those of you who have been attending VB, uh, please sign your attendance at the hall. Uh, and yeah, at the back of the hall, uh, that's Clarine. Everybody give us a wave. Yeah, Clarine will help you uh, with your attendance. So we are actually keeping track, right? So I'm, I'm keeping track. I know who's attended uh, which session. So if you'd like to graduate, uh, 
you were going to attend all the, the 12 sessions uh, this year, right? And um, there's a booklet with all the materials uh, right here. It looks like this. All the 12 materials is in here. So if you're new, why don't you pick, up, pick one up um, and, and just a, a, a love gift for five bring it uh, would be great just to help us you know, cover the cost for all that, all right? And um, at the end, if we have time, um, we can ask questions. So uh, again, it's tiny.cc, I'm sorry, you can't see that. tiny.cc slash ask Vimi, okay? So just key in that website and you can ask questions on the slide. Uh, and and it, you can remain anonymous, you can put your name down uh, so that Pastor Edmund can address you. Uh, it's up to you, yeah? So, so ask questions at the end. And uh, that's all. So um, I'd like to pass the time to Reverend Ed a bit. And today we're going to talk about uh, the vacuum, the vacuum, right? Yeah. So he's going to to talk to us about that. So why don't we put our hands to welcome Reverend Ed? Shalom, everybody. Happy to be in God's house. Yeah. Though it's not a Sunday service, it's still God's house when a group of Christians gather together, it's God's house. Amen. So let's be respectful if you're in the house of God, meaning you can't stop your phones, you know, and just give your full attention. We all invested time to be here. So let's let's allow the Spirit of God to give us all that we came for. Who can say amen? amen. Tell the person beside you, it's no mistake you are here. It's no mistake you are here. Yes. It's no mistake I am here. It's no mistake you are here. Uh, come and join. Where else? behind us. VIP. Is it coming from? All, all, come join. Join everyone. Just come in. No, no, we are raised a small group. There's so many empty seats here. Uh, you can just let your phone touch there. It doesn't matter. Your phone will take your phone away. Just come. Come. All right. I like to see people gathering together. That's right. Yes. Closer. Let's pray. It was a good time of just worshipping the Lord. What a privilege it is to be able to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You can say Amen. amen. If Jesus didn't die for you and I, we have no rights to worship. Let us not forget how much Jesus paid so that we can worship, we can pray. For many Christians, worshipping and praying has become a cliche. For they have forgotten what Jesus has done. He bled. He died. He suffered so that we can pray to the Father. Come on, let's pray. Yeah, yeah. Praise your God. Heavenly Father, we just want to praise and thank you for tonight. We want to praise and thank you for this gathering. We want to praise and thank you for this opportunity that we are able to learn things from your word, Lord God. In the area of spirituality meets sexuality. Thank you, Lord, for each person who's Who's already here? We also thank you for each person who's on the way. May the blood of Jesus cover each and every one. Hallelujah, Papa. Send your angels to guard the four corners of this room. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We need your presence, we need your touch, we need your anointing. Come, Lord, and drive away from our lives everything that needs to go. Everything that's not of you. Oh, hallelujah. Everything that's not of God be driven away from our lives. From our emotions, from our minds, from our flesh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Enough of us. More of you, Jesus, and less of us. More of what you think and less of what we think. Less of what other people think about us. It's what about you think, oh Jesus. It's about your thoughts about us, oh God. Hallelujah. We want to hold on and stand on your opinion, Jesus. On your views, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, God. Do a new work for each and every one of us and no one be left out. No one from the oldest person here to the youngest one. No one be left out in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And all God's people say, Amen. Isn't God amazing? It's amazing, and that's why we are here. That's why we are all still living. We have been given another day today. Amen? To do life all over again. 
And I pray that none of us has taken this day for granted. Another day that we have. Another day to glorify His name. Another day to become more of the person we were born to become. I hope none of us are the same. We are the, today we are exactly the same as yesterday. Or last week, last month. Tell your friend beside you, are you getting better in Jesus' name? Ask your friend beside you, are you getting better in Jesus' name? Anyone who's in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. We are not supposed to remain the same. Amen. If you are the same, something is not right with your Christianity. Something is wrong with your Christianity. Don't blame your church, don't blame your pastor. Blame your Christianity. Blame your walk. We are supposed to grow from glory to glory. Who can say amen? amen. If we have not grown this week, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, even as you sing the, under this teaching, you will move somewhere better, somewhere further in your spiritual journey. Amen? Amen. 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 Be ready when you come for V meet, be ready to learn and also unlearn. And I always say this sometimes it's easier to learn than unlearn, especially when you are above 40. You are stubborn like a bull. You become so stubborn like a bamboo, old bamboo, hard to bend. Or maybe impossible to bend. Okay, so not just learn. Learn means putting new things in your head. Unlearn means you also got to be ready to let go of things that need to go. No use to keep on putting new things in your head, but still holding on to the rubbish that's in your head that you have gathered for the longest time. Yeah. Let God be God. You can say amen. amen. Not just allowing Him to put new stuff into your life, but also releasing what needs to go. And you don't have to go. And I'm not talking, I'm not saying this, I'm not saying this to the person beside you. I'm saying to the person that's still the person in the mirror that you see, that's us. Yeah. Sometimes the whole that person needs to change. Needs to change, but we forget the one that really needs to change is the one we see in the mirror. That's me. That's you. Be ready to change. Today's yes. lesson is entitled The Vacuum Issue. How many of you have sat in this lesson, the vacuum issue, maybe last year, a few years ago? Anyone has sat in this lesson? Okay, very good. There's two people, three people. Very good. So for the rest of you, so this is a brand new lesson. So I might have mentioned the word vacuum issue here and there. But if you have not sat in the whole lesson that speaks about the vacuum issue, please pay attention. You have to invest your time to learn, especially if you are here to help yourself or you are here to help someone whom you love. So please pay attention. Learning objective, which I'm, I'm reading from your, from your book, page 25. Participants, that is you, will be able to define the vacuum issue which is the second trigger to sexual brokenness. I, I, I've written about these three issues. I teach a lot about these three issues as I travel the world. Last month, we spoke about the first trigger issue. Can anyone just shout out in your book? What is the name of the first issue? Very good. Give yourself a clap. Very good. The second issue. I hope you do not just know the name of the issue, but I hope that you understand the self issue to help yourself and help others. If you don't, doesn't matter. Go back and look through your notes. But reading through the notes alone will not really help. You need to sit in the lesson. But if you sit in the lesson and you go through the notes, it helps. For people that have never sat in the lesson, you just go to the notes and it means nearly nothing. Because this just these are just skeletons. Because I explain and I, I these are just as I said, I give you the, the muscles and the flesh. This is just a skeleton. So you have to come for lessons, okay? Um, so, and last lesson was a self-issue. So just briefly, what is a self-issue? A self-issue basically is rejection of self. I hope and pray that all of you took the lesson with you last month and went home to think about it, to pray about it, and to allow the Spirit of God to show you what kind of self-issues you are struggling with. How many of you, after last month's lesson, if you were here, you kind of realized that you have, and this, if you have a self, listen, if you have a self issue, or a vacuum issue, or even a barrier issue that we will study next month, it doesn't mean you are sexually broken. These are human issues. Say human issues. There are tons and tons of human issues. Like, for example, if you're always late, we need that. We said, hey, you come and take it. That's an issue. 
issue. You can't keep a secret as an issue. You're a greedy person as an issue. You know, these are all human issues. They do not mean, it does not mean you have these issues equates to you are sexually broken. But the problem is if you hold on to these issues, the self vacuum of error, you, you, it can lead you into becoming a sexually broken person. Come on, are you listening? Yeah? yeah? So, any one of you have gone back to the last thing and you felt, hey, I, have a, I have a self issue. Hands up, you were bold enough. Very good, there's so many of you. And denial is fatal. <laughs> okay, and you have a self issue and you pretend like you don't have it, you're not going to go anywhere further. Okay, denial is really fatal. One of the key things about recovery is admitting the issues that you have. That's like A. Then you can talk about going to B, C, D, E. Okay, the first thing is to admit that I have this issue. And second is to bring it to the Lord. You don't have, you don't admit you have an issue. How can even you bring it to the Lord? Isn't it? If you say, I, that's not me, that's him, that's her, that's my mother-in-law, not me. I'm very imperfect. I don't have any issues. The first thing is to admit you have an issue. Don't take your wife. Look at you, can do you have that issue or not. And then second, bring it to the Lord. When you bring it to the Lord, get ready for an instruction. When you bring things to the Lord, listen, get ready for an instruction from Him. Get ready for a door to be open. If you're not ready for a door to be open and walk through, then don't bring up the Lord. You're not ready to move, don't pray. Are you listening? Yes. You're not ready to move. You're not ready to walk through the door, don't pray. Don't think you just pray and Santa Claus is going to throw things for you. What if I ask again? In my last experience, I'm going to be 50 in a few years, in two years' time. Since I've been, I've been a Christian since I was 25 years old. I've never experienced this praying things happen. When I pray, God opened doors, God sent the right people. I have my part to play. You have your part to play. If you refuse to play your part, don't pray. Are you listening? Come on. So you want to pray? Make sure you be ready to do your part. If not, forget it. When you pray, God will open doors, God will close doors. God will even close doors when you pray. And everything God does is good. Yeah. Everything. But when He takes away the best thing that you the, the thing that you like most, if He takes it away, it's also good. And that's why we call Him God, because we super duper trust Him. I don't call you God, we don't call the pastor God, we don't call the man in the mirror God, we call God, God, because he can be trusted. Amen? Amen. Sometimes when you pray, God says, go for me, and you're going to come. You, you all kinds of things he does. Hallelujah. But let's look at this. So for those of you who lifted your hands up earlier and said that you suspect you have a self-issue, that's good, you admit it. The second thing I would say is start praying. Very often God was, God, very often not all the time was Approach this person, get pressed. There's power in confession. There is power in confession. Look and say amen. amen. Don't go and confess your issues to any Tom, Dick, and Harry. Only stupid people do that. Okay? When you have an issue, don't go to any Tom, Dick, and Harry. Oh, I have this issue. No, no, no. That, that's foolishness. You have to go to someone that the Lord needs you to. And very often, it's someone wiser and older, spiritually, not age. Age has nothing to do with wisdom. Look and say amen. Yeah. Okay, go to someone who oh, very often that's, how, that's that's true for me. I pray, I admit my, my issue, and I'm still admitting and I'm saying I have a lot more issues. Just the same as you all you all feel you resolve one issue, but we'll show you the next. And the next and the next. Yeah, so I resolve this issue, ah, okay, Sarah, Sarah, I finished already. No. Yeah. You go into your grave, you will still have issues to resolve. Amen. Yeah. And the wife will say, the wife will do this. I can't wait for my next issue. I can't wait for my next issue. The wise will do it. The foolish will say, oh, that's not me, that's not me, that's him, that's her. Be your issues, be able to resolve. And you'll be, you'll be transformed. Resolving issues cause you to be transformed. You go and take the better place. And boom, new issues come. And you deal with it. You admit it. You pray. You surrender. You go through the door. Whatever it is. They get, get resolved. You go to the next level. Boom, and an issue. You, you, that's how, that's how, I always say this. The, the seed get transformed into a caterpillar. The caterpillar resolves an issue, become a, a, a pupa, and a pupa resolves an issue, becomes a butterfly. With no resolving of, as, with no resolving of issues, you will remain a, a seed for the rest of your life. But what a pathetic Christianity is that somebody remains a pupa 
forever and forever. You must know, so right? Living like something like a living, living dead, they're just sleeping. That's all you do. Always still. You do it just forever until you go to your grave, you're a you're a caterpillar, just eating and eating and eating and eating. Never become that butterfly, you can fly and serve the Lord and glorify his name. That's what a spiritual butterfly will do. Who can say amen? amen. We all need to come to the place of soaring with wings spread open. Not for our glory, but for the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. That will never happen if you don't deserve it. That will never happen. Some people just want to rebuke me. Oh, I cannot really, I cannot think of, don't rebuke me. Hey, very often one of the major things that God used to resolve your issues is through rebuke. I beat you. Lift your hands if you if you know what I'm talking about. Come on. That, that one of the biggest ways of resolving your issues is getting rebuked. Come on. Come on. You can't get rebuked, then just remain the whoever you are. Remain. Don't change. And it's not just for those who are 16, it's for those who are 60 as well. Old and young. We all have issues to be resolved. Get ready. No use even to sit here in this lesson and learn about the vacuum issue if you are not going to get it resolved. What's the use? And if you yourself have this vacuum issue not resolved, dream on, you will never be able to help anyone who is actually broken. Don't give yourself any help. So you want to help the sexually broken people, let me tell you, majority, if not all, of those who struggle with LGBT problem, majority, if not all, with at least 90-80%, uh, listen up, uh, of these LGBT people that you want to reach out to, they have this vacuum issue. But the majority of them have, not all, but majority. But if you yourself, as a quote-unquote straight person, you have this vacuum issue, how in the world are you going to help those people? No way. So as you sit here, open your heart and say, Lord, Reveal to me if I have a vacuum issue. I want to be set free. Show me how, Lord. Show me how. Teach me to be humble. Teach me to confess to the right people. Let's go to our lesson. Can you have some water, please? The vacuum issue. Let's look at your, the, the lesson, page 25. The vacuum issue is not the same thing as the natural human need to, to uh, give and receive love from people of inner gender. Some people think the vacuum issue is this. It is normal, listen, it is normal to have relationship. It is normal to, to want love. It is normal to give love. Say it's normal. It's normal. Oh. That's not a vacuum issue. It's normal to want to have a, 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 the desire to have a love relationship. That's normal. So when we talk about this, that's, when we talk about the vacuum issue, it's, it's not that. Okay, it's something crazy. The vacuum issue is not a normal thing. Listen, look at that two bullets there below A. Masculine vacuum issue. If you have a masculine vacuum issue, it means you have um, you, you have this emptiness of wanting male love. If you have a feminine vacuum issue, it means you have this emptiness of a great desire for female love. Are you following so far? Yeah? It has two kinds of vacuum issue, the masculine vacuum issue or the feminine vacuum issue. And worse still, for some people, they have both. If you have both, we call it the human vacuum issue. Okay, let's say if Harry, Harry has never, when he was growing up, he has never experienced feminine love. No mother's love, no sister's love, no aunt's, no grandmother, just zero or no female love. Then there is a high chance he will have a feminine vacuum issue. Okay, are you following? So if on the other hand, if, if Dick and Stefan has never been loved by father, no brother, no grandfather, no uncle, no male figure in his life pouring love in his life, there's a high chance he will have a masculine vacuum issue. Okay, then let's say if uh, Melissa never had love from both parents, no, nobody ever loved her, she was left alone, then she will have both feminine and vacuum Feminine and masculine vacuum issue. And it's crazy. When you have this vacuum issue, it's actually like you have a vacuum cleaner inside of you. You know what's a vacuum cleaner, right? The vacuum cleaner is constantly sucking in the rubbish and dirt and dust and garbage. What fills up? What fills up the person's soul is love. Say love. love. Okay? We don't want to be filled with rubbish 
And love is very often mistaken for sex. A lot of people think that sex is love. And love is sex. And that's not true. That's, that's the lie from hell. I can love brother Joel so much without having sex with him. I can love him. I can comfort him. I can spend time with him. I can even grow old with him. I can share with him my secrets. I can take care of him when he is sick. I can do all those loving things. And I don't have to have sex to show him that I truly, truly love him. Are you following? And on another note, I can have good sex with a prostitute without loving her. So sex is not love. And love is not sex. Who can say amen to that? Yeah. So people with the vacuum issue is calling out not for sex, but for love. But people have this bad habit of going after sex to resolve their vacuum issue. And the first thing that happens if you do that, the first thing is you will never resolve your vacuum issue. The second thing is that there's a high chance you're going to get addicted to that sexual activity. Be it real life sex or porn or masturbation. All these people do, people do any kind of, many kinds of sexual activities to try and fill up their vacuum. Are you listening? Are you listening? Yes. But are, there's two people, are you listening? Yes. But the only true antidote to resolve your vacuum issue is real love. And until then, and all, if, 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 if he has a vacuum issue and I give you all the counseling in the world, even let's say if I counsel you with love, and let's say if you have a masculine vacuum issue and I'm a guy, and I counsel you with love, I can kind of pour some love, but it's not enough. You need deep love. You need real love. So all the counseling is, is good, but it's not enough. He needs to experience love to be filled up. That's why in our ministry, we, we have this something that we promote. We call it DPR, which stands for Deep Platonic Relationships. Basically, basically there's two kinds of love can be divided into two. There is a sexual love, which uh, is another term that they use, eros. Say eros. Eros. eros means sexual love. And all the other types of, the main types of love, which is equally beautiful, fall in the other category. The other one is called platonic love. In the form of stoje means family kind of love, which is platonic. Filio kind of love, which is platonic. Filio means friendship kind of love. Storge means family kind of love. And then the, the other one above all, which is agape, which is God's kind of love. Are you listening? Come on, are you listening? Yeah, so there's a lot of avenue for us to experience deep platonic relationship. I can share deep platonic relationship with my son, with my brother, with my father, with anyone. But the deep platonic relationship is, is a beautiful thing and that's the only antidote to be filled. Get to resolve your vacuum issue. Let's move on. B. Let's look at B. Doesn't real love only come from Jesus? No questions until the end of the lesson. Okay. B. The vacuum, the reason for that because you're going to disrupt my whole lesson, right. then I won't be able to finish in time. Okay? okay? So take your questions down. If you, if you will pay attention earlier, you're supposed to key it into the website to get, to get the questions there. Alright, so let's do that, let's do that. B, the vacuum issue is a desperate, intense, and tiring, crazy need for attention. To be loved, to love, to be affirmed, and to be accepted by others of the same gender, depends on which issue you are messing up, or even the opposite gender. Like for me, I had a severe masculine vacuum issue. That's why I had a lot and lot of sex. I started having sex with men since I was 13 years old. I had sex with hundreds of guys. Hundreds and not an exaggeration. And I wasn't even looking for sex. I was looking for love. I thank God I'm not HIV positive. I should have had HIV positive. So I had a lot of unprotected sex. I had orgies. I even prostituted myself for six months. Not because I was poor, but because I was fed up of having sex for free. I said, why should I have sex with this man for free? I'm going to make them pay me. I was paid for six months. 
So I did all kinds of stupid things, all in the name of a stupid issue called the vacuum issue. And why was that my story? Because I was never loved by my father. I have three big, I have three older brothers who never loved me. I never had a grandfather who loved me. I never had an aunt. I had, I had zero. I have zero memory of any male loving me. I was so, so thirsty. My soul was so thirsty. I always say this. If you have a masculine vacuum issue, your soul is very thirsty. If you have a feminine vacuum issue, your soul is hungry. You know what is true for the flesh is often true for the soul. Your flesh, okay, can we stand it, please? This flesh needs food and drinks. If this flesh just ate and ate and ate and ate, especially food that has very limited liquid, it will not survive. You will become very unhealthy. Or if this flesh, this body, just drank and drank and drank, let's say he drank milk from young until today, he's 24 years old, he's still drinking milk, he will not survive. We were created to eat and to drink in our body. You can say amen. amen. Same for our spirit and even our soul. Same with our spirit. Your spirit also needs food and drink. I always say this. What is food for your spirit? But today I'm not going to just give you a little tip here for those who are hungry and thirsty in the spirit. We are three in one spirit, soul, and body. The food for your spirit is God's word. If you don't study God's word, you are not eating for your spirit, for your inner man. Your, some of your inner man is Drop in there. That's why you temptation comes out of open already. Temptation comes just go away. You, you, don't, you know what I'm talking about, right? The smallest temptation comes, oh, you go. Because your inner man is like a dry leaf. Not eating. What is drink for your spirit when you express, listen here, the mouth of your spirit, your spirit man, is your heart. I spoke a lot about this in our retreat recently. We have an annual retreat. And I encourage all of you to attend the retreat. Uh, maybe about five or six of you attend the rest of you from Malacca. Anyway, the mouth of your spirit, the mouth of your body is this whole is the mouth. The food and drinks and all this. The mouth of your spirit is your heart. So when you take, when you read God's word and it goes above your head, you're not eating. You can read from cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation. You can listen to the best sermon on Sunday, but if the word of God doesn't go into your mouth of your spirit, you are not eating. Are you listening? So the mouth of your spirit is your heart. When God's word enters when through a man of God or to read your Bible, you are praying five times, it has to enter your heart, then you are eating. What about drinking? Drinking is the other way around. When words come out from you, from your heart, words in the form of prayer or praise or worship, words come out, it goes to God. That's, that's when you are drinking. Are you following? Come on, are you following? Yes. The woman at the well. She was, you know, there, there was a topic on drinking of water and, 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 and he said, I have water that, that you drink, you will never thirst anymore. And Jesus concluded with, true worshippers will worship in truth and in spirit. So when you, that, 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 when you have that word, that opportunity, when Deacon Stephan was, 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 uh, was leading in time of worship, why do you think I, I will... Whenever an opportunity to worship, I will worship like that. I will worship like that because I want to drink. I want to drink. I want to drink for my spirit. A lot of people, when there's an opportunity to drink, they just don't drink. Opportunity to eat, they just don't eat. That's why your spirit is dying. Some, a lot of Christians, your spirits are dying. Your spirit man is so scrawny, dehydrated. Okay, let's put the spirit aside. Let's talk about it. Today's topic, your soul. Say, I have a soul. soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. What's your will? Your will is a part of you that makes decisions. Your will is the part of this. I will do that. I will not do that. That's your will. So your soul has three compartments. Your mind, your will. I I, I go in this mouth because that's what I I will do that. I will have sex. I will not have sex. I will masturbate. I will not masturbate. I will come to Vini. I will not come to Vini. I will forgive. I will not forgive. That's your will. So your soul consists of your mind, your will, and your emotion. That's your soul. And your soul, just like your body and your spirit, needs to drink and to eat. So drinking for your soul 
is masculine love. Eating for your soul is feminine love. That's why a child can only be formed and be, be born into this world through a man and a woman. Two women cannot form a child. Two men cannot form a child. There must be an egg and a, and a sperm that can form a fetus eventually become a human being. Who can say amen? And it is God's plan for that child to be loved by a man and a woman. It's every child's right to receive masculine love from the father. It's every child's right to receive feminine love, feminine love from the mother. But sadly, we live in the broken world. We have broken parents. Parents who did not do what they are supposed to do. They know only how to have sex. They know to do all that thing, but they don't know how to give the love that a child needs. But God is good. In His mercy and grace. Like for my case, I only started receiving love from men when I was 25 or 25. I was supposed to receive love from the first day I was born. It's my right as a human being. But I was never loved until I was 25. I only had lots of sex. From 13 to 24, I had a lot and lot of sex. Only when I was 25. And then I refused to drink. I got, see, after, when I was 24, for those who do not know my story, I broke up with my last boyfriend, Benjamin, when I was 24. And then I, I broke up and I walked away from the gay lifestyle, not because I'm a Christian and all that. No, I was not even a Christian when I became an ex gay. I became an ex gay because I was sick and tired of that lifestyle. To me, that lifestyle is poisonous, it's destructive, it will, it will destroy me sooner or later. That's why when I was 24, I decided not just to break up with Benjamin, but I broke up with the whole gay lifestyle I just made. And these are the kind of people who succeed. I have a lot of people come to me and say, Oh, Pastor, I want to be an ex lesbian. Go, Why? Because I broke up with my girlfriend. Oh, not go with the nuts. Because you break up with your girlfriend, you'll meet a new girlfriend next month. I want, I, want to, I want to be an ex gay. Why? Because my boyfriend left me. No, not going to be a girl. Not ready yet. You want to be an ex LGBT? This must be ready to break up with the whole lifestyle. Then you will succeed. Are you listening? You break up with someone, someone else will come. The devil will just send well, the devil will send a better man than the boyfriend that you broke up. If, if I didn't break up with my, if I didn't break up with the gay lifestyle, I tell you, let me tell you, Benjamin is gorgeous, my last boyfriend. Okay, he's good looking, he's, he's, he's my dream guy. That was the reason why I was willing to settle down with Benjamin. I was willing to, to just go all with him. I was willing to marry him and then just go live happy ever after. Rent two dogs, migrate, whatever it takes to be with him. But thank God, he cheated on me with another man. The man that I was, I gave up everything. I gave my body, I gave my time, I gave my money, I gave everything. Cheated on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God that heartbreak. There was a punch of my face, which was very, very good. And I didn't just break up from him. I said, I'm, I'm too smart to call me waiting for Mr. Right. All my life, I was waiting for Mr. Right. I'm too smart to wait for Mr. Right. I'm done. I'll grow old without Mr. Right. I will grow old. And you see, at that time, I didn't know I would be a pastor. I didn't know I would get married. I didn't know I was going to be a reverend. I didn't know anything. I just thought I don't want that kind of lifestyle anymore because why? I rather go all the time. I knew in my heart that I need men's love. But I was, I was so dirty, you know. By the time I was 24, I was still, after all the men, after all the sex, I was still so thirsty. I, are you listening? But I was willing to carry on going all forever being thirsty. Then to be abused by a man. I was willing. But when I was 25, the next year I got born again. You know. Right. But how what works because I was when I when I walked away from the lifestyle I became available. Now I became available because all my life I was not available. I wake up hoping I'm gonna meet Mr. Right today. I dressed up to look pretty so that I hope to meet Mr. Right today. Everything I did is for the purpose of hoping I will meet Mr. Right one day. I went clubbing hoping to meet Mr. Right one day. Everything that I did, I wore Different color lens, maybe my eyes must be a different color. And I'll read this the right. All this real story. I did everything I did, all my money, everything, everywhere I went is hoping that I will meet him someday. Until I decided to break out with my lifestyle. I became free. I didn't have enough time after that. Even though I didn't have a man.
can, but I had a lot of time. And that's when I became available. And then I was, no, no, God works at the right time and the right way. Who can say amen? At that time, I was already surrounded by Christians. I was working in the Salvation Army when I was, I started working in the Salvation Army when I was 18. Okay, so at that time when I broke up, I was 24. I was working in the Salvation Army, work, I'm a special educational teacher, for those who don't know. I work with special children. Before I became a pastor, I was a teacher. So I was in, I was working for the Salvation Army in the school for children with Down syndrome and autism, autism and all that. So that place I was surrounded by Christians. And then I became when I became available as I broke up with the whole gay lifestyle, I became available. I have nothing much to do now. So that's when God just intervened. And he just came in. I'm just telling the story short, but many things happened. If I, I was willing to give Jesus a chance. That's how it happened. But if I was in that lifestyle, if I continued after banking, I said, okay, I'll break up again, I'll find another man, I'll go on until today. I was, I was, I was, I'm, I'm a very busy person. I don't believe in sitting and doing nothing. If I want a man, I'll do everything to get a man. If I don't just sit down and wait for the man to come, I'll look for the man, I'll go man hunting. I went man hunting all the time. I'm like that, you know, like, yeah, I, anything that I want, I'll hunt for it. I want a successful ministry, I hunt for it. I want an intimacy, God, I hunt for it. Like, I'll fight, I'll fight to spend time with God, I'll do everything to get what I need. Are you understand? I'm not a passive person. I'm like that. So when that ended, I became available. Yes, I and it's amazing that things begin to happen. One after another after another. And it brought me to where I am today. I'm still enjoying this journey with the Lord. God is good, amen. Yeah. So when I was 25, God told me, and as I said, I was ready not to build, I was ready to throw all being thirsty. But I said, No, you need men. You need men. I said, What? I don't need men. I'm sick and tired of men. Men are, men are just useless. Get them out of my face. I'm done with men. I said, No. I was already born again 25. God told me, You need men. But you need men as your brothers, as your fathers, as your sons, not as your lovers. I said, What do you want me, God? I don't understand. If I, if I love a man, it means he has to be my lover. I can't love a man as a brother or a father. Whatever it is. But thank God I have the spirit of obedience and I pray that all of you have the same spirit. If you don't pray for it, it's important to have the spirit of obedience. Some person has stubborn spirits. Have an obedient spirit and God says, okay, say, God says, you say, I need men, means I, let, I, I will agree with you. And, and God says, don't worry, but this time is different. Hmm? You don't have to look for, you don't have to, you don't have to go mad Don't look for it. I will send men into your life. And God started sending men into my life. All in all, God sent 12 different men at different seasons of my life. From when I was 25 until now, I am 40, will be 48 soon. God is amazing. Amen. Amen. And I didn't have, and my, my, and that's, and I had to read, I had to read them all over again what it means to love a guy. But it's amazing when you walk in God's head. It's amazing to share love instead of sex. God just transformed my whole mind and my whole heart. That's how I got, that's how my vacuum issue, when I started, my vacuum issue was like, I would, I saw this right, was like, we, have, we all have this, listen, we all have two tanks inside of us, masculine 